Taliban, like factories producing Taliban. So every year, thousands of Taliban are being added to the ones already there. Extremists are being created because of illiteracy, because of poverty. We need to mainstream the madrasas. Let's get these students of madrasas to come into our colleges and get into any other profession than being a, a, a cleric in a mosque. While some call for President Musharraf to shut down these madrasas completely, others vehemently defend the Islamic schools. This is just a conspiracy against religious education. Those who want to destroy the Muslim society in the Quran, arrest or kill the Mujahideen, and raid their religious schools. Even take the small children who learn the Quran to police stations. The madrasas aren't the only pro-Taliban element based in the Afghanistan-Pakistan tribal region. Powerful Islamic factions like the Jamiat Ulemi Islam Party openly support the Taliban in Afghanistan and advocate for a Talibanized Pakistan. The Taliban do not want the American influence in their country. We have supported the Taliban, if not gone personally, to jihad with them. It's an immense challenge for coalition forces to stop the Taliban and their Pakistani supporters from moving freely over a border teeming with arms, drugs, and organized crime. To fully understand the complexity of the Afghanistan-Pakistan border, you really need to see it. Right now we are standing right close to the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. I have about 22 kilometers of area to look after. That 22 kilometer is entirely secure. And I can assure you, no Taliban is crossing from this side into Afghanistan to fight American forces. A former Taliban official disagrees. Everyone knows that the Taliban comes here from Pakistan. Their families are there, and they are equipped and backed from there. People moving freely back and forth across the border is as easy as crossing the street in the United States. Afghan President Hamid Karzai blames Pakistan for the scores of Taliban fighters entering his country. Pakistan's government points the finger right back. Let's fence this border. Let's have minefield along this border so that we are able to check the illegal border crossings. Pakistan has said it many times, uh, but uh, probably this proposal has not been agreed to by Afghanistan. The Taliban share their ethnic Pashtun heritage with many of their Pakistani neighbors, leading to speculation that the so-called Taliban resurgence is actually a Pashtun independence movement. Well, every Afghan that takes a shot at us, we call a Taliban. Maybe he is a Taliban, or maybe we just call every pissed off Pashtun a Taliban. Well, Pashtunistan is a movement within the tribes that straddle the border to create a Pashtun tribal homeland. And there has been a resurgence since 2001 of that kind of desire. That is a death blow to Pakistan as a national entity because all it would leave is a sliver of territory on India's northern border, which would be indefensible. There is something bigger brewing up, and we must take actions to counter that bigger threat that may come in the future. Former U.S. spy Rel Mark Gerecht believes that President Musharraf might be willing to help the Pashtuns retake control in Afghanistan in return for leaving Pakistan in one piece. You should expect the Pakistanis to continue to be sympathetic, if not give outright support to Taliban-esque forces in the Pashtun community. Diverse groups and dangerous new alliances make up the current insurgency against Hamid Karzai's government and the American-led coalition. Any party fighting against America, and that's the people they are calling the Taliban. In the meantime, despite one of the biggest manhunts in history, the one-eyed leader of the original Taliban remains at large. Mullah Omar was always a very reclusive person. 
For example, on one of the first leaflets we dropped into Afghanistan saying, if you bring Mola Omar to us, you'll get this much in reward. Well, we put the wrong picture on it. It wasn't Mullah Omar, it was another functionary of the Taliban. Mullah Omar's location today is a secret, even to other Taliban leaders. The authority of Taliban they didn't know about Mullah Muhammad Omar. And when he is uh, ordering something to the Taliban, he is sending video. His command is sound right now, but nobody knows where is he. Those who've met him can't imagine that Omar would hide anywhere other than southern Afghanistan, the home he's always been reluctant to leave. Well, Omar, of course, I can say with certainty that he's in Afghanistan, and he has never been in Pakistan. Why should he be? He's among his people. They're protecting him. Well, Omar is very much in that area of Kandahar. He's still there. He's operating from there now. With its leadership largely intact, its support strong in Pakistan, and an increasingly unpopular foreign occupation, the Taliban movement seems here to stay. Meanwhile, Afghanistan's living standards still rank among the worst in the world. 24 million people depend on foreign aid. Opium farmers prop up the barely existent Afghan economy. The Taliban miraculously eradicated opium poppy cultivation in 2000. But in 2006, Afghanistan accounts for 92% of the world's illegal heroin. Afghan children play amongst the rubble accumulated over three decades of fighting. Their average life expectancy is just 43 years. I couldn't in any way, shape, or form predict how long it's going to take to rebuild a nation that has suffered through 25 to 30 years of conflict. I can tell you that it's a long time. An entire generation of Afghans may never live to see peace.